Hello, and we're back in Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver 2. Let's look at some stuff. For a start. That's where we were, yeah. We can't get back in? Nope. Um, what happened with the sword? Yeah, it's Did like... kind of cast it aside? I thought he'd cast it aside and it went clang. So this was the legendary Janos Audrin, reputed to have been the most ancient and diabolical vampire to have ever existed. According to folklore, he lived high in the cliffs of Nosgoth's northern mountains and preyed mercilessly on the defenseless villages below. His reign of terror ended when the Sarathan finally hunted him down and tore his throbbing heart from his still-living body. This relic came to be known as the Heart of Darkness and was supposedly imbued with the power to restore vampiric unlife. The Sarathan therefore guarded it carefully lest the heart fall into the hands of their enemies. But I wondered, could Janos Audrin truly have been as monstrous as depicted here? Or was this merely artistic license by the Seraphan, who sought to lionize themselves by demonizing their darkest enemy? Oh, I'm sure Maybe. none of that will be relevant. We'll find out, yeah. <laughs> So I'm assessed that the symbol we saw on the floor before as well is sort of the symbol of the Seraphan as well a bit, I think. It's sort of the two wings shaped U. Keep on seeing these. Can you stand on them or something? Or do you know what they are? I know what they are, but... Also, is your health going down? Uh, yeah. Is that what it means by if you don't get it solved after a while, it'll, um... No, that happened in the first game as well. Oh, okay. Oh, you'll see what it means by fully aroused and all that other business. Oh, okay. I don't think that has anything in it. D, 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 Okay. Right, so... This is where we're going. Right there. Now, do you see that bar? Oh, do you? So that bar goes up whenever I sort of do an action. So even if I'm just standing here and I'm doing this, it goes up. Is it like a rage meter or something? Sort of, yeah. Strange how my history came full circle. This chapel, I realized, was a memorial to my former Seraphan brethren and myself. All of us martyred here, and then so cruelly profaned by Cain when he imposed his gift on our noble corpses. For the first time, I beheld the image of my Seraphan self memorialized here among my fallen comrades. It tortured me to see how noble and pure I had been, and what a vile phantasm I had become, and a profound sense of injury, of loss and betrayal welled up in me, so overwhelming I could barely contain it. All I wanted at this moment was to find Cain and destroy him. It's a very intense moment, and unfortunately all I can think is it's overwhelming, is it? Uh. <laughs> oh, that didn't take long. Are we going to look at everyone? Yeah. Also, uh, you'll notice the mechanic of floating weapon. No, the mechanic of um, when I kill them with the reaver, I don't get the souls. No. The soul reaver does. You seem to have to pick between the soul reaver powering up or you powering up, I take it. So here's Duma. Duma. Now, Duma was. Was he the one who was like almost invulnerable and we had to pull the things out of him? The stakes out of him? Maybe. I think it was. And then we have a door. Is that the door we came in? I thought we came in the spiky one. Yeah, I thought we came in that one. Maybe. Just keep going around. Okay, anyway, that's Duma. Down. And then we have a Zephon, I think. Yes, Zephon. 
who was spider bud there's us raziel we get a statue well we were the i'm assuming we were the firstborn or maybe no that that just meant we got raised first isn't mm. it and there's a uh, terrell who very we cool, have uh, cool. who we missed out and uh who is this Who's this is rahab, rahab. He was the the well. He's got seahorses on him. He was the yeah, water breather. Yeah, same as their their um. Dare I say it? Almost a little power rangey. You've got the aqua one and the green one and the <laughs> red one. I suppose it sense. Uh, Melkaya, who was Zombie Chan. So we've got up to the second floor. And that's the bad way. Yeah. But I am wondering why we've got an extra door. I'm just going to pop through and see what's there. So is this just where we came from? Unless it's just a way around to the other room again. Probably backtracking for no reason here. You'll have to forgive me. Yes, I am. Okay, let's just go back again. But yes, I love the uh, the sass-offs the characters have with each other. And obviously the dialogue is fantastic. So it seems like we've been brought here, and by the way, of course, this is a revisited location. We visited this in Soul Reaver 1, where we found the um, Tomb of the Saraphan just on a different timeline. Oh, well, that's supposed to be the thing, the sort of connecting all of the games. It's the same place, it's the same characters. You're not going to collect the soul or two. I don't know where these guys came from. Uh, yeah, I could do. But yes, unfortunately, the um, impalement mechanic has gone. Uh, which is sort of fair because you're fighting humans, but do you remember how puny humans were in, in Soul Reaver 1? I suppose you could make an argument that at this point these aren't regular humans, they're all trained to like kill vampires, but... Trained to be as annoying as possible. They're still humans and you're still supposed to be like, way special. I think it's just okay. the one dog. Just this one dog? Yeah, yeah. first time beheld Nosgoth in its former glory. The land overflowed with abundant life and vitality. And I knew with certainty then that the world I had left behind was nothing more than the corpse of Nosgoth, a lifeless husk bled dry by the corruption of Cain's parasitic empire. This was the fragile world Cain sacrificed to preserve his own petty life and ambition, heedless of the profound cost. The sight only deepened my resolve. I sensed that the pillars lay to the northwest. And if Cain truly waited to confront me there, I would not disappoint him. Yeah. Oh, we got a music change. And I do dig the music. So we've got a door over there, which I'm going to check out before we leave. This looks gorgeous. Oh yeah, the game's amazing. It's like the skyline and the mist and the particles and I think the only thing that's perhaps the least graceful is the water surface. Yeah, it doesn't look great. Also the throwing physics are interesting. I think our only way is over and in the water though. Yeah, we're not getting back up here. And yes, of course, we can still swim. Jump to swim and move around, I think that's said. Yep, and then you, you can do the whole ducky jump thing to come I out. I do not yet possess the means to unlock this barrier, but this enigmatic symbol was clearly the key. Yes, enigmatic. Wasn't this in the previous game? Mm. That particular symbol? I don't think so. Okay. I thought it was the symbol for one of the locations. 
Maybe I'm wrong. I might be wrong. It might just be that it's the same style. Ugh. It's just, you know, because the link between Tomb Raider and Legacy again, I always think, and just dive. <laughs> and it's like, no, it doesn't work. You can't do a, a handstand either. So the swimming still works pretty much the same way. There's a mysterious thing on the floor. Hmm, there is. How ironic. Oh, those like infinity symbols rather yes. than peanuts. Uh, well, what else can we tell about the symbols? Well, spirals and a wheel. Mm -hmm. Here are those symbols of, I'm sure mm -hmm. we both know, same as uh, that is as well. But anyway, where we're going is over here. Over there. As I pass this arcane landmark, a wisp of the Reaver's energy was drawn into the ring, illuminating it. This created a beacon of sorts in the spirit world. If ever I found myself depleted in the spectral realm, and my soul tossed on the ethereal winds, these beacons would draw me back to safety and restore me. Right, is it a checkpoint? Mm, it's also another kind of contrivance as well, because it's like, well, what would have happened if we died earlier when we were in the spirit realm? Well, that's why I didn't really give you anything challenging. Right. But the right. uh, same as like his sword is already shorter than it used to be. But anyway, all we do next is activate that. Okay. But I'll have a quick look over here, because there's another one of those interesting basin style things. I assume we'll do something with them at a day to day. Yes. Because it's cute that the thing is an, is it an Ouroboros? It's a little... Yeah. yeah. Right, so was, um, the Ouroboros, of course, was an ancient symbol for autofillatio performed here. No. Where that fish just went for a look. Yeah. So it's like, because there's stuff underwater, does that mean it used to not be underwater? Or is it supposed ah, to be underwater? Ah, that's an interesting thought as well, yeah. Um, actually, we can just pop into the spectral realm and have a, have a quick... Have, uh, a, have a bit of a look-see. Have a look-see. I didn't really warp all that much. Ah, oh yes, but water doesn't have body, as it were, left. I think. So it looks like there's sort of a roundabout path up. Yes, and the music goes all mongy. Yeah. But yes, it's like there's um this sort of gate here and there's a path. It's like it kind of looks like it's supposed to be here underwater or not. Also, it's quicker to walk than swim. Right. That's ah. kind of neat. Here's ah. our friends, the Slua. Yeah, I'm thinking, would we have little creatures in the, the other realm again? Nom nom nom, Militia. Well, they, they look a lot better than these two. Sims, does our even not build up rage in this mode? No, just it's aroused in the physical realm. Right. Speaking of which, there's um, Mobius's Yahweh hands, but the less said about that, the better. So say you're gonna have to either change or commit to killing him. He's coming in at a fast speed. And yes, Mobius' hands in that cutscene were huge. I know it doesn't walk much. No, it really doesn't. Other locations do. Maybe it's sort of going for a symbolic, like, obviously the Saraphan and its castle and its people are sort of touched a bit by corruption, so they're all law. That's an interesting thought, yeah. Whereas outside is just, you know, it's just nature. Just noticed a point I could actually get up. I was just thinking, like, look. oh, there's another thing over there, and there's something else over there. He couldn't he use his, like, wing flaps to help him swim quicker? Oh, is this just so you... Oh, okay. I was thinking, is this just so you can have a look, or...? 
Ah, I see. Is that just so I can get down so there? Can get there? Yes, I'm assuming we get something to what activate those or something at some point. Good thinking, yeah. And yeah, that giant like cathedral door is also half underwater there on your left. Isn't it? Yeah. Right, so we go up here instead. These ancient obelisks were mysteriously attuned to my spiritual essence. By simply touching the symbol, I could safely preserve an imprint of my soul, and thus create a milestone to which I could return when weary, and from which I could resume my journey. So yes, that's just a save point. But it's a little blade this time, because it's like it sort of reminds me a little of uh, bat points from Blood Omen 1, where they were the like reflection. little platforms with little like obelisks Actually, yeah, them. I think it is supposed to be reminiscent of that. But yes, obviously it's a little blade. Well, big blade. Big blade. <laughs> Interesting design. It's got a symbol on it. And like I say, isn't it cool that we still have the same abilities? It is, rather. While I had only just escaped the stronghold, I sensed that in time my journey would return me full circle to this place. Infiltrating the fortress, however, would be no small feat. The balcony that had provided my escape was now well beyond my reach, leaving this massive gateway as the only means of entry. The gates were sealed, but like the time-streaming chamber I had seen earlier, their operation was undoubtedly linked to that odd crystal mounted above the entrance. Yes, but do we get to keep all of our abilities? Yes. Yes, Which we do. Which is very cool, because obviously it's a very, uh common contrivances of game sequels to go, and now we're going to take everything off you, and then you have to get it again. Because I think the only thing we've lost is our health. Yeah. Which sort of makes sense in a, like, a, you've become changed. It's not too, uh, hard to understand. I remember he said it. <laughs> I love how he talks. You do too. Hey. Kind of just blasts her into nothing. Oh, I've got bodies on sticks of vampires, yeah. I love the lighting through the trees. Those torches. I take it you can't pick them up though. Um, is that him fully aroused? Yep. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> You're happy I can pick up the torches. Because I was a bit worried they'd take that out as well. It has a nice little lighting effect around you. He has like a projectile weapon. Oof. You set him on fire. Discord Fernal. Nice detail with the, the carrion. Oh, tried to change the music there. Yes, the birds. Oh, cool. you can take his projectile weapon if you want. Nope. There as well. Hmm. Very cool.
We can go underneath the bridge as well, I think, there. That's a little, there doesn't appear to be much there. No, there's one of those weird objects, but other than that. One of those weird objects? Oh, one of the, right, yes. Same as obviously the game feels a lot less blocky than the previous one. It's starting to look a bit more modern. the fact that I'm pretty sure the games actually came out in relatively quick succession. Hmm. This is 2001. Is that? Can you look up What's at what? it? What's what? This. Just a thing. It's like a, a weird structure. Fair enough. Seize him! Taste <laughs> Nice. Oh, here we are at the top of the, uh, the water feature. I think you can knock him off if you angle yourself correctly. Oh. Didn't actually mean to do that, but never mind. Oh, I didn't even notice that on the way up. <laughs> that was just another little water feature, that's fair enough. Yes, the music has a good um, ambience to it. It's, uh, I like it, yeah. I really do like the music of Soul Reaver too. I think it's underrated. Oh, there's a thing. Excellent. <gasps> Is that a waterfall almost? Should I check if there's anything behind it? There isn't. Aww. Right. <laughs> there is a torch on the wall, though. Well, I'm not going to deal with it right now. Okay. So the, the sort of birds kind of disintegrate. Yes, I suspect, because they're supposed to be agents of Mobius. Mm. These vampires had nothing in common with the deranged jackals I left behind in Cain's derelict empire. They seem to retain much of their former humanity. In this era, vampires were clearly not the uncontested predators we had been. These creatures were hunted mercilessly and oppressed. And while I still believe that vampirism was a plague and had to be wiped out, there was nothing noble or righteous in this crusade. This was simply ruthless persecution. Mm hmm. I'm getting your world views changed there, Raziel. So, yes, it's obviously slightly dangerous to use the Reaver, but it does feel much more powerful than, than earlier on when we were fighting things without it. Just oh, you can kill just things. Disintegrate things, yeah. This is a fun door. First time I played this, I did this. Oh, there it must be something work. else I need yeah. to do. I didn't realise it said hold. Ah. You've always got to read the instructions, I guess. And you can let go and it does that. And then we're going to ass ourselves into this room. Pillars of Nosgoth, pristine, whole, and uncorrupted. I had never beheld them in this undefiled state, yet something profound and indelible resonated within me at the sight. And there, waiting at the very heart of the pillars, was the canker that was destined to destroy them. I know you're there, Raziel. Mobius led me to you, Cain. Though I might have guessed you'd meet me here. 
And if Mobius told you I was hidden on the underside of hell, would you throw yourself into oblivion to pursue me? Mobius trawls for the ignorant and unwary, hauling his gasping prey from the streams of their destinies. Stay out of his net, Raziel. Spare me your elaborate metaphors, Cain. I have pursued you here for one purpose. You will pay for your betrayal, and balance will thus be restored to Nosgoth. And whose will is satisfied then? The will of Raziel or Mobius? Would I be better manipulated by you, Cain? Now, turn and face me. The chase is over. This isn't a chase, Raziel. We are merely passengers on the wheel of destiny, describing a perfect circle to this point. We've been brought here for a reason. I've seen the beginning and the end of our story, however, and the tale is crude and ill-conceived. We must rewrite the ending of it. You and I. Face me, Cain. Even you shouldn't die a coward's death. Isn't it customary to grant the condemned a final request? I recall no such courtesy from you. Indulge me, Raziel. All I ask is that you listen. This is the sublime moment of our undoing, Raziel. The ineffable fulcrum upon which swings the entirety of our history. This is where all of Nosgoth is betrayed. In this instant, Ariel, the Balance Guardian, is murdered by dark forces bent on overthrowing the pillars. Her spirit is just now tearing free, lost in the ether, trying to find its way here. We have already seen how she comes to haunt these pillars. Bound here by your refusal to die, you are the reason this land becomes diseased. As long as you remain alive, you condemn Nosgoth to an eternity of decay. Be still, Raziel. See this. As Ariel dies, I am being born to take her place as Balance Guardian. Such is my destiny. At the moment of my first cry, Ariel's beloved, the Guardian Nup Raptor, finds her corpse. Racked with grief and tormented by suspicions of treachery, Nup Raptor plunges into a madness which overflows and infects all of the Guardians who are symbiotically bound, including me. The repercussions of Ariel's assassination were expertly calculated. The entire circle descends into madness, and I am tainted at the moment of my birth, instantly rendered incapable of fulfilling the role destiny has prepared for me. Shall I show you the same mercy you showed the rest of the circle, then? You blithely murdered them to restore their pillars, yet your hand faltered when it came to the final sacrifice. What makes you exempt, Cain? You're merely the last man standing. Why condemn me for simply carrying out what you hadn't the courage to do yourself? Let's drop the moral posturing, shall we? We both know there's no altruism in this pursuit. Your reckless indignation led you here. I counted on it. There's no shame in it, Raziel. Revenge is motivation enough. At least it's honest. Hate me, but do it honestly. Thirty years hence, I am presented with a dilemma. Let's call it a two-sided coin. If the coin falls one way, I sacrifice myself and thus restore the pillars. But as the last surviving vampire in Nosgoth, this would mean the annihilation of our species. Mobius made sure of that. If the coin lands on the reverse, I refuse the sacrifice and thus doom the pillars to an eternity of collapse. Either way, the game is rigged. We agree, then, that the pillars are crucial and must be restored. Yes, Raziel. And that's why we've come full circle to this place. So after all this, you make my case for me. To end this stalemate, you must die so that new guardians can be born. Pillars don't belong to them, Raziel. They belong to us. Your arrogance is Boundless, Cain. <laughs> <laughs> this
There's a third option. A monumental secret hidden in your very presence here. But it's a secret you have to discover for yourself. Unearth your destiny, Raziel. It's all laid out for you here. You said it yourself, Cain. There are only two sides to your coin. Apparently so. But suppose you throw a coin enough times. Suppose one day, it lands on its edge. And yes, we're going to be tossing coins over and over until we find one that finally lands on its edge. Until we see you again next time. Bye-bye.